we were discussing with how actually hackers are trying to understand what is the vulnerability on a server and how they are trying to launch an attack if there is a vulnerability. So for this hacker is first going on with footprinting where he is trying to collect all the information about a targeted host or a network and then he is going on with scanning where hacker is trying to identify how many systems or how many servers are present in the network using IP address scanners and then trying to identify what all services are running in using port scanners and then finally using vulnerability scanners hacker tries to identify how many vulnerabilities or what sort of vulnerabilities are available on the server. Now as we have seen in a last session if there is a vulnerability hacker can easily launch an attack and compromise a targeted host but what if there is no vulnerability on a server if there are no weakness we think like hacker would not be able to launch any attack but actually there are still different kind of methods what a hacker can use so here today we will be discussing about a technique called denial of service or in short we call it as DOS attack so let us see what actually happens in denial of service and how does a hacker try to compromise a server even if there are no vulnerabilities on the machine so here when we speak of denial of service Denial of service is an attack where hacker tries to prevent the end user that is the consumer or the end user from accessing the resources of a server. So assuming if I am a hacker and I am trying to target a server, what I will do is I will try to make sure that the server is busy with so many number of requests and it would not be able to process my request there. Now generally what happens is in case of a DOS attack, hacker would try to launch a large number of requests to the server, making sure that server is too busy to accept any kind of request from the end user and process them. And in case of a denial of service or a DOS attack, hacker would be performing this attack from a single computer. So you would not require multiple systems, you will be doing it from a single computer here. And there is also another variant or we can say like a, a different approach here when we go with denial of service that is called DDoS or distributed denial of service. Now in distributed denial of service the main intention is still to make sure that server is not able to accept our request and process that but at the same time in case of a denial of service hacker tries to perform this attack from a very large group of computers or from a very large group of host. Now the advantage here is as we already know servers are very powerful computers or very powerful machines. Now trying to launch an attack from a single host may or may not be successful in all the cases. So now in case of a DDoS hacker tries to do the same attack at a time from multiple machines. So if one computer is not able to crash a server maybe thousand computers can. So what hacker does in case of a distributed denial of service or a DDoS attack he will first take care of controlling thousand computers or maybe even more than that by using malwares. So hacker can use malwares to take over control of a very large group of computers. Now from all the computers at a time hacker would launch an attack and try to compromise the mission. So this is the major difference here between DOS and DDoS but the intention in both the cases is to bring down a server or make sure that the server is not able to accept and process our request. So here when we speak of uh, what sort of a symptoms we may see as a network administrator. Now when there is a DOS attack going on onto any of our network host, it can be on a server or can be onto one of our network devices like a router or a firewall. So the first thing is we see that our network activities or network responses would become very very slow. So all the network bandwidth is being utilized by the request coming in for DOS attack. But if you are hosting a web server and DOS attack is targeted towards your web server, accessing your website would be very very slow. So not only the end user, even employees of our network who are directly connected to the same server within the network will not be able to access the server because server is receiving too many number of requests than what it can actually process. So these are like the symptoms either our network bandwidth is fully utilized 
server responses become very very slow or sometimes you will not even be able to access internet. So, the main reason why these kind of things happen let me explain it here. So, assume there is a DOS attack targeted towards one of my server. Now, let us call this as our web server. Now, along with web server in my network I have few client computers also maybe my employees are connecting to internet from here. So, this is a router and now it is getting connected to internet. So, when there is a DOS attack being done, so when hacker is trying to perform a DOS attack on the server as we said hacker is sending in too many requests to the server, maybe it is from a single mission or maybe a very large group of missions are participating in the DOS attack over internet. So, when the requests are coming in from so many systems here, right, my server would receive more number of requests than what it is designed to process. So, it would not be able to accept all incoming requests and process them, that is one problem and because the bandwidth whatever is given by ISP. So, here let us say I have a 1 Gbps of bandwidth that is given by ISP. So, all this 1 Gbps bandwidth will be used for the requests which are from hacker. So, all the requests coming in from hacker that is all the DOS attack request will use up all the 1 Gbps bandwidth making sure that even if one of your LAN computer has to reach internet the bandwidth is not available. So, in case of DOS hacker is trying to send too many requests to the server let us say my server is designed to process 1000 requests per every second. So, as long as I am receiving 1000 requests we do not have a problem, but if hacker is trying to send more number of requests let us say he is trying to send in 5000 requests per every second. Now, my server would not be able to accept and process them it would crash. So, that is what we call as denial of service or DOS attack. So, now let us see what different types of uh, DOS attacks can be performed. So, here when you speak of uh, DOS attack techniques we have three major techniques that are being used by hackers like ping of death, buffer overflow and sin flood attack. So, these are three different methods how a hacker can launch a DOS attack on our system or on our server and compromise it. So, let us discuss this one by one. So, first we will start with ping of death. Now, generally we all use ping command to see if we are able to get connected to a server or a resource or not. Now, generally ping is only sending a request from our system to see if we are able to communicate with the remote host or not. And when we speak of the ping size, if you are doing it from a windows computer your ping packet will be 32 bytes in size or if you are trying to do it from Linux you will have it as 64 bytes but the ping packet can be increased. So, we can increase the size of this ping packet all the way up to 65500 bytes. So, in case of uh, ping of death what hacker does is he will try to send an abnormally large size ping packet. So, he is trying to create a very large size ping packet and then target the server. So, this is how it happens. So, assuming this is my web server which is connected on internet. Now, the operating system of my mission is expecting a maximum of 64 bytes ping packet. So, ping uses ICMP protocol. So, it is only expecting a maximum ICMP packet of 64 bytes, but as we say hacker can create a very large size packet. Assume hacker is trying to create a packet of 10,000 bytes and sending it to the server. Now, my operating system whether it is windows or Linux is not ready to accept such a large ping packet, it is not expecting it. So, whenever you receive a large size ping packet all of a sudden your operating system would not be able to immediately accept and process it. It would take some time for the operating system to understand what is going on and then respond back. Occasionally one or two requests of such a large size ping packet not a big problem to the server, but assume there are 100 computers on internet and they are all trying to send 
100 ping packets they are all trying to send 100 ping packets of 10,000 bytes in size. Now, just imagine what would be the situation here on the server. So, you are receiving in nearly 10,000 bytes ping packet from 100 computers each sending in 100 ping packets continuously. So, now our operating system would not be able to accept such a load and it would crash and this we call as ping of death. But today most of the modern networks ping of death is not successful because your gateway devices are designed in such a way if there is any abnormal size ping packet coming in it will deny this it will not accept it. But there are also other techniques as we discussed it is like hacker can create something called a buffer overflow attack. So, here when we speak of buffer overflow buffer can be called as a temporary memory. So, buffer is like a temporary memory which is used by every application it can be your operating system or it can be an application. So, every application would use a buffer memory to store the request and then process them. So, assume my server can accept and process 1000 requests per every second. So, assuming it is like this my server can accept and process 1000 connections per every second. Now, if a hacker wants to create a DOS attack assuming hacker is trying to send 5000 requests per second. Now, obviously 5000 requests per second is much higher than 1000 requests per second which my server is designed to accept and process. So, in such conditions what actually happens is your server would accept the first 1000 requests and the other 4000 requests the additional number of requests which are coming from internet will be pushed onto your buffer memory and this 1000 requests will be immediately processed and responses would be sent back to the user. But the problem here is as we say hacker is trying to initiate 5000 connections per second continuously. Now, this is in the first instance second instance from the pending 4000 request server would accept 1000 requests and try to process them. So, now here we have 3000 requests present in buffer and from internet we are receiving 5000 more sessions. So, totally it has become 8000. Now, in the next instance you will again try to process 1000 sessions, but here you have total of 7000 pending request and from internet again you are receiving 5000. Let us say my buffer memory can only hold up to 10,000 requests in buffer. So, here we do not have space or we do not have storage to accept all the 5000 connections from internet. We will be able to accept only up to 3000 connections. Then what about the other 2000 connections pending in? So, in this case your buffer memory will try to erase the old request to accept the new ones. So, what it does request number 1 to request number 2000 which is already present in buffer will be deleted to accept new request. So, now your buffer memory starts from 2001 to 12000. So, you now your buffer memory is from 2001 to 12000. So, it is able to accept all the incoming requests from internet, but the problem is to accept this it is deleting the old request which is already pending in the queue. Now, your web application may be your IIS or Apache server would come back to the buffer memory and request I would like to have request number 1 to request number 1000 which is pending, but now the problem is request number 1 to request number 1000 has been deleted. Now, those requests are not available in the buffer storage. So, at this stage your application would not be able to accept any new request and process them. So, it is trying to access a resource which is not available in the buffer storage and now your application would crash. So, this is what happens in buffer overflow. So, here hacker tries to send too many requests to the server making sure that server would not be able to accept and process the incoming sessions. So, buffer overflow is an inconsistency of your program or your application on how to handle the memory properly. Now, generally speaking of uh, 
applications which are designed in C or C++, they are more vulnerable to this particular buffer overflow attacks. So, if your applications have been designed in C or C++, you will have to be really very careful, so that buffer overflow would not occur there. And then, the next kind of attack method that a hacker can use is something called SYN flood attack. So, here hacker will have to send too many TCP SYN messages to the server to bring it down. So, let me explain what actually happens here. So, here in case of a SYN flood attack, hacker is going to send TCP connections. So, let me just uh, revise what actually happens with the TCP connection between a client and a server. So, if a client has to create any session with a server using a TCP connection, it has to first send a message called synchronize. We mentioned this as syn. So, synchronize is a first request that client computer is sending into a server. Now, server has to respond back with synchronize acknowledge. Server has to respond back with synchronize acknowledge or synac and then client has to respond back to the server with acknowledge. So, this we call as three way handshake or TCP three way handshake. So, without this uh, TCP three way handshake, we will not be able to establish a TCP connection. Okay. So, for any session, it can be a web server or it can be a email server or an FTP server or a gaming application, any kind of session, if it is using TCP connections it has to establish a TCP three way handshake. So, without TCP three way handshake, it is not possible for a client to connect with the server. Now, here in case of SYN flood attack, hackers are trying to use this TCP SYN messages to bring down a server. So, let us see how actually this happens. So, let us see the TCP states. So, by default, your TCP connection state so your TCP connection state will be as closed. So, this is a default state, your session is not active, it is closed, and then you receive a TCP SYN message from a client computer, and then you are responding back with. TCP SYNAC or synchronize acknowledge. So, at this stage your TCP connection would be in half open condition, it will be in half open state. Now, if you are receiving a TCP acknowledgement from the client, this half open state will be converted into established. So, these are the states how your TCP session would be there. So, by default your TCP connection would be an a closed state. If you receive a TCP synchronized request from a client machine, you respond back with synchronized acknowledge, which converts your closed TCP session into half open session. Now, once you receive a TCP acknowledge from the client, half open session would be converted back into established state. But here in case of a attack, hacker is not going to send acknowledgement. So, let us say our server can accept 1000 sessions per every second, it can accept 1000 incoming connections per every second. Assume hacker is trying to send 1000 synchronized messages, hacker is sending in 1000 synchronized messages and now server is responding back with 1000 synchronized acknowledge messages. So, server is responding back with 1000 synchronized acknowledge messages. So, now we can say that all 1000 connections what my server can accept are in half open state, they are all in half open state. But now in SYN flood attack, hacker would not respond back with acknowledgement. So, we are not receiving any acknowledgement, zero acknowledge. So, now what happens is all the 1000 sessions what our server can accept and process will be remaining in half open state. So, they will continue to be in half open state till 
the timeout period. So, this is again based on the application. So, assuming my application has a TCP timeout of 120 seconds. So, it means that for the next 120 seconds, server will not be able to accept any new connection coming in from a client computer. So, after 120 seconds, server would remove all this half open, sta half open states or the half open connections, but this is only after 120 seconds. It will remove all the half open connections and start accepting new incoming sessions. But the problem is for the next 120 seconds, no one can access our server, be it from internet or be it from local network. Again, there is no guarantee that hacker would stop doing this. So, after 120 seconds, once server is ready to accept all the incoming sessions, hacker would again continue with the same thing. He would again send synchronized messages and stop sending the acknowledgements. So, if this procedure or this process continues for a long time, our server would not be reachable, our server would not be accessible to anyone. So, these are like three different techniques how hackers are trying to create a DOS attack and compromise our mission, either using ping of death or using buffer overflows or using half open sessions that is through sin flood attacks. So, now let us see what kind of applications are being used by hackers to perform this kind of attacks. So, when you speak of a ping of death that can be done directly from your command prompt itself. So, in command prompt, we have different options wherein we can also try to increase the packet size. So, here if I say go with an option L, you will be able to increase the packet size here. So, now let us say I wanted to ping this particular server 192.168.1.222. So, here as we can see on the screen, the packet size is only 32 bytes. But if I give an option hyphen L and make it as 100, now here we can see the packet size has increased to 100 bytes. So, in the same fashion, we will be able to increase the packet size. Let us say I will try to keep it as uh, 15,000. So, I am just trying to increase the packet size as 15,000. In the same way, you will be able to go with increasing the packet size up to 65,500 and here if you have observed earlier it was like less than a millisecond. So, it was not even taking 1 millisecond for us to get a response from the server, but now time has increased to 1 millisecond and here I am doing this in a controlled test environment. So, there are not many people who are getting connected to the server. So, 1 millisecond we can still consider that your server is not able to accept and process the sessions, but if this is being accessed by so many people at a time, so many number of sessions are coming in, this time would increase, increase it to few hundreds or even thousands of milliseconds, which actually shows us that your server is not able to accept incoming sessions and it is about to crash. So, ping of death, you can directly perform it from your command prompt itself. Now, let us see what applications can be used by hackers to create a denial of service. So, here as we can see there is an application called anonymous dosser. Now, this application is very specially designed to target websites means it is going to launch HTTP based DOS attack. So, it will continuously keep sending a HTTP request to the server and see how does the server respond to it. So, let us give the IP address of the server. So, once you give the IP address, you will have to mention how long this requests are to be sent. So, I am mentioning it as a send the number of requests for 999 seconds. So, for the next 999 seconds, you will be continuously sending HTTP request to the server and see if it is responding or not. So, here as we can see, it says that your requests have been sent and you are also receiving the responses. It means that your server is up and running, it is able to accept the sessions. So, what I would do is I will try to run the same application multiple times as if like there are multiple sessions coming into the server at a time and we will see what would be the result. So, as of now there are uh, two instances running in, let us start a third instance as well. So, here if you see 
there are actually three different instances and in all the three different cases server is able to accept and process our request we don't have any problem with the server's performance now to increase the number of sessions i'll not be able to run multiple instances using the same application so i'll use an application called switchblade which helps me to create 40000 connections onto the server so all i have to do is give the ip address of the server and mention the number of connections so i'm mentioning it as 40000 connections at a rate of 5000 connections now let us start this so here in this we can see how many number of sessions are being accepted and how many sessions are getting rejected and here in the background we are also able to see that your dos attack is successful and server is not able to accept and process our request so if there are two requests or three requests coming into a server not a issue but when you try to send some thousands of requests to the server server would not be able to accept and process them and it would crash so the moment i stop this attack again server is able to accept and process all the incoming request now if i want to have the same kind of dos attack performed using tcp half open sessions i'll have to use an application loic low orbit ion canon so here this application helps us to create half open sessions so the previous applications anonymous doser as well as switchblade both are going on with only http connections so here let me mention the server's ip address so this is a server ip address 192.168.1.222 and i would say try to launch an attack on port number 80 that's a default port used for your web server and here i would say use tcp connections so we have options for tcp udp and http i'm only choosing the tcp connection and i would also increase the number of sessions to 5000 so i'm trying to simulate as if 5000 people are connecting to the server at a time and then i would also uncheck this option wait for reply so here if we wait for a response from the server you will be able to send a new request only after receiving a response so that will not may uh, will not give you a successful dos attack so i'm just trying to uncheck that and let us start this now here as you can see in the background you're getting a result immediately so it is not even taking much time to create a dos attack and let me stop this so here i have stopped the attack and here as we can see server is not able to respond back immediately but this was not the case when we are using http based attack that's because once the http request stops coming in server will be able to accept and process the new incoming sessions but here when you go with the half open sessions server will not be able to accept and process a new request till the timeout period so now as we can see once the timeout period is completed now server would try to flush all the half open sessions and accept new sessions coming in so this is how hackers can use different applications like anonymous doser or loic or switchblade to create and launch a dos attack onto the server so when we speak of uh, different techniques that hackers are using in hackers are trying to go with footprinting to collect all the information and then scanning to identify what ip addresses are live in the network what all open ports are present and also what vulnerabilities exist if there is a vulnerability hacker is trying to launch an attack and compromise the system if there are no vulnerabilities hackers can use dos attack techniques to bring down a server but the difference here is if you find a vulnerability and you are launching an attack you will take over full control of the server or you will have control over the data in case of a dos attack you will not have access to the server you will not be able to take over the control of the machine or the data you are just making sure that server is not able to accept and process anyone's request so not only end user even hacker himself would not be able to access the server in a dos attack now when we speak of uh, launching the attacks and all right there's always a risk associated here now 
when you are trying to go with a scanning or when you are trying to go with any kind of exploit or DOS attack, your IP address is always known to the targeted host. So as a hacker, if you are trying to communicate with the host, your computer's IP address will always be known to the targeted site or the targeted server. Now generally when hackers are trying to launch attacks, they always try to come up with some new methods or new techniques to hide themselves, to hide their real IP addresses. Right. So if the IP address is not known, if your IP address is changed, there is no way that someone can trace you. So now let us see what techniques hackers are using to hide themselves. So there are different kind of techniques like proxy servers, Tor networks or VPN servers. So these are like three different techniques. So let us discuss about all the three. So here when we speak of a proxy, in case of a computer network, proxy can be a hardware or it can be a software application which is behaving as an intermediary host between a client and a server. So this is how a proxy would work. So assuming this is my user computer. And this is a targeted host, whatever you are trying to access. And now we will have to find a proxy server on internet. We will have to find a proxy server on internet. So what actually happens in case of a proxy? Request coming in from user's computer would first go to the proxy server. Proxy server would then analyze what actually is a request and then send it to the targeted host. So now as per this particular mission who is receiving your session, request seems to be coming from the proxy server not from your computer IP address. So here your computer's real IP address has been hidden by the proxy IP address. Now here when we speak of uh, proxy servers, we have both the uh, free versions available as well as the paid versions or premium versions as we call. Now free versions generally do not give you with any kind of security and the premium versions give you with security because they do not save your session activities. So in a free version, who is connecting to the server and after connecting to the proxy where exactly they are accessing, at what time and how long the session was, all this information will be maintained. So here you will have logs. If you go with the paid versions or premium versions, they do not maintain logs. So there is a major difference here between a free and a paid version. But here there is one drawback when we discuss with proxy. The request which is going on between user's computer and proxy server is in clear text. So there is no encryption or there is no data protection for traffic that is passing in between user's computer and the proxy server. So ISP can still monitor what actually is your request and stop it or block it. So let us see how do we find proxy servers on internet and how do we use them. So before using it, let me check what is my real IP address. So here I am using a website what is my IP address dot com which shows us my computer's real IP address before connecting to internet. So as of now there is no proxy configured. So now to find out a proxy, I will be using some free proxies. So let me perform a Google search. So in Google search engine, all we need to do is type in proxy IP list. We just have to type in proxy IP list. And here Google has some results. So let me choose some proxy server from this particular web page usproxy.org. So here it is showing us with uh, different IP addresses for proxy servers. So it shows us with all different IP addresses and the port numbers available. So let me choose a proxy here. 
I'm choosing a proxy server. So we just have to select the IP address and copy this. And along with the proxy server IP, we would also need to check the port number. So here the port number is given as 34156. So let us go to our browser settings under options. We just have to scroll down till we see this option network proxy. Under settings, we say manually configure the proxy settings. So that is a HTTPS proxy. So I have to give it under SSL proxy, give the IP address. And similarly, we should also mention the port number 31456. Sorry, 34156. So 34156 is a port number being used. So once we mention the IP address and port number, let us say OK. And then try to access the same web page again. Now here as we can see, the IP address of my computer has been changed. And now it says that I am browsing internet from USA. So this is how using a proxy, a hacker can change his source IP address. But as we said, in case of a proxy, your data is not secure because there is no data encryption between your computer and internet. So hackers can directly use tools available in Google, just perform a simple search for proxy servers, take up the IP address and use it on their systems. But when you use a proxy, that particular proxy settings will be effective only on the web browser where we have done the configuration. So here I have done the configuration on my Firefox browser. So only traffic that is initiated from my Firefox browser will be passing on through a proxy, not everything on my computer. So let me just uh, remove the proxy and we will see what other methods are available for hackers. Now the other technique that a hacker can use is something called Tor browser or Tor network. So here Tor stands for the Onion routing. So this is actually designed by US Navy in mid 1990s. So their main intention was to make sure that US Navy, whatever they are going on with communications between maybe their uh, naval fleet and the base stations and all should not be disclosed to anyone and no one should be able to see what, a, what kind of traffic is being uh, sent and received. But problem was like in mid 1990s as we said, Tor network was made as an open source. So US Navy has given away the source code and now the Tor community has taken the source code and they have made it even better. Right. Now let me explain how actually this Tor network works. So if there is a user computer here, which is connected to internet and you have to access this destination. So this is the target. So what actually happens in case of Tor when you are using a Tor browser, request from user computer would first go to something called Tor entry node. Request from user's computer would first go to Tor entry node and this is all encrypted. So this communication is all encrypted. Now Tor entry node would further forward this to Tor relay. So traffic from Tor entry node will be further sent to Tor relay which is also encrypted. Now Tor relay will further forward it to Tor exit node. Tor relay will further send it to Tor exit node which is also encrypted. Now Tor exit node will actually send it back to the destination. Now here the thing is Tor entry nodes and Tor exit nodes are maintained by the Tor community and Tor relay can be hosted by any person. Right. Now this is how you will have three different missions between your computer and the targeted host if you are using Tor network and the advantage is 
all the traffic is encrypted between user's computer and the destination. Okay. So now let us see how do we use this Tor browser. So here I have Tor browser already installed. It is an open source application and it is free. We do not require any license. So this is how the Tor browser window looks like. So let me try to access the same website. What is my IP address dot com? Okay, so here we have the result. So it says that I'm accessing internet from Ghaziabad, and if we look into the Tor root, it says that request from my computer is first going on to Germany, from Germany to France, from France to Sweden, and from Sweden. It has again come back to India and from India it is going on to internet. So, in this way even if I am trying to access some other web page like say microsoft.com, I will be able to access a web page, but if I look into the path or in the route. So, here it says uh, traffic is going on from my computer to Germany, from Germany to Italy, Italy to Germany and from Germany to internet again. So, this is how you will have three different hosts between your computer and the destination network. And of course, all the data in Tor network is encrypted, but the same drawback or the same limitation that we have discussed earlier with proxy traffic is only effective from this particular browser. So, if you want to use any other application and still want that to be routed from a specific host or a proxy kind of thing that is not possible in Tor. For that we would re we would have to go with something called a VPN network. So, let me show you how actually a VPN application works. So, here I have a VPN application. So, again this VPN tools you have free and paid versions. So, here if I check into my browser settings I do not have the proxy configured. So, here I have already said do not use any proxy and let me just uh, start my VPN connection. So, once the VPN application says that I am connected to a VPN, let me check with what is my IP address now. So, here as we can see it says that I am reaching internet from Finland. So, I have not made any changes to my browser and not only traffic coming from my browser, even if I try to do trace route or ping that will also pass through VPN itself. So, I am trying to perform trace route to say 8.8.8.8 which is my DNS server. Okay, seems like there is a firewall which is blocking the request. or I will just try to go with the ping. Okay, so, here as we can see when I am trying to ping it says that the TTL is something like 123, right? but 8888 is actually a Linux based server. So, the TTL should be somewhere around 60 or something. Now, here as we can see the TTL is 43. So, once I disconnect my VPN the traffic is actually passing on in a different route and that can be seen in the changed TTL values. So, this is how hackers can use different kind of technologies to hide themselves. So, here as a network administrator what we are supposed to do is try to protect our networks from different sort of attacks. Now, there is no way for us to identify where exactly this request is coming in from. Maybe it is really coming in from a direct IP or maybe hacker is hiding behind a VPN server or a proxy server. So, the main intention of me showing you these things is you will not be able to trace where exactly the real attack is originating from, but we will be able to identify what sort of an attack is being done and also make sure that we take proper precautions to stop it. So, that we will be discussing in the countermeasure sections and also with our network security part what all precautions we will have to take to stop this kind of attacks.
So I hope this session has been informational on how actually DOS attacks are being done and also how hackers are trying to hide themselves. In our next session, we will see if a hacker is sitting in our network, how does he launch an attack and what approach he will have to use. So there we will see with the password cracking or password stealing techniques. Thank you all.